Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. For those that truly reconciled. Reconciliation. Please tell me how you were able to move forward. Was your WS fully on board I guess I'm looking for hope and advice on what to do or how to do it. I really want to reconcile with her but I'm not sure if it's possible, especially since she has been so unhappy for such a long time. It really does hurt me that I didn't know how unhappy she was. Even though she tried talking to me about it, I couldn't actually hear her. Yeah. I'm successfully reconciled, I'm a WS, S 21 years ago there's no short answer to how we did it, it's a lengthy involved process anything more specific you'd like to ask. Other posters who say reconciliation isn't possible if the WS isn't genuinely remorseful are 100% correct. Additionally, relationship problems are common, but they are separate from the purposeful decision to cheat. If the WS uses those issues to justify their cheating, that's called blame shifting and it's an indicator that they are not remorseful. You can be at least 50% responsible for the relationship issues, but you are exactly 0% responsible for their affair, that's 100% their fault. What you say is right, we can be 50% responsible for the relationship issue but 0% for the affair, the affair is 100% the fault of the offender and they have to own the mistake. It's a very disrespectful way to show that there is an issue in the marriage. You can't make her reconcile. She has to be the driver in that process. If she isn't remorseful of what she did to you, no reconciliation will ever occur. You are just destined for her to go another round with the same AP or a new one. I feel so sad every time I see this kind of post. 15.6% of couples that stay together after infidelity succeed in reconciling. Tilde 6% of those were later exposed to still be cheating or have cheated again. You're looking at maybe a one tenth chance yours will stay the course in full honesty. If your waywards isn't doing literally all the emotional lifting, it won't work. Reconciliation is about building your trust from scratch. Any work you could possibly do on your end undermines them, proving they are trustworthy again. Read books on healing, letting go, and get personal therapy. But the waywards should be here asking about how to fix things, not you. Where do these numbers come from? I would suggest you get some help from r slashes and after infidelity. 3 years successful. WS took full responsibility and showed real remorse immediately. Immediate no contact with AP. WS did all the heavy lifting, listening to me vent and endless questions without becoming defensive. Constant affirmation of love, even on demand. Open phone policy, log into all social media and email, and location tracker, to build security as a step to recover some amount of trust. On top of that, WS accepted my needs of rules and boundaries and understood this would take years and not just months to get past. We completely overhauled our relationship. It's now part two of this marriage. We are pre-01, we plan alone time, connecting time, invest money in our relationship, vacations. Everyone else is second priority unless there is an emergency, kids, work and relatives. We became cheesy and having fun is the goal. We stopped the nagging and annoyance over day to day crap. We communicate with respect and complete honesty, very hard and at times embarrassing. Good luck. Asked for a divorce today. Progress. So I gave my wife a choice to unfriend all these people she calls friends on Snapchat including at least two guys she cheated on me with or I'm filing for divorce in the morning. She refused to unfriend them and claims she's not choosing them over me. I replied I cannot be clearer you either want them or me but I'm done being treated like shit. I'm going on 6 hours with North Carolina with her. Help me stay strong and don't give in. 
Update still going strong took my wedding ring off this morning contacted my lawyer unfortunately she can't represent me since she represented both of us in custody battle over my son left messages for two others. I think she made it clear she would choose people over you, her husband, why would you give her a chance? She proved she has no interest in saving the marriage. Or maybe she's thinking OP is making empty threats or a spineless claim. Either way, I hope OP sticks to his guns and takes charge of his life. Enough is enough of being a doormat. Never and I do mean never, allow yourself to be disrespected by anyone. Let alone your wife. Including at least two guys she cheated on me with. She refused to unfriend them and claims she's not choosing them over me. She's lying to your face. She cheated on you before with these guys, and she wants to keep talking to them? Her level of disrespect is beyond anything. You should put your self-respect above her disrespect. And you better go to therapy, because possibly it is Stockholm Syndrome. I have my first apt on Thursday to see someone because yay and ducked up. My husband chose his phone, and his just friends too. Stay strong. My husband has literally started to ignore me and threw me out of his life. Which I guess is a defense thing for him, but a blessing for me, we're in the same house so it's so hard to deal with. I try to hide away in the guest room so I don't see him. But you're doing the right thing. You set a boundary. She didn't respect it. Do what you have to. Stay strong. I'm sorry you have to deal with that. I'm pretty sure as we go through the divorce a hell have to live with me since she has no money and once divorced she's moving home to North Carolina. Contacted divorce lawyer. Update. Thanks for all the support here. I drove all the way down to North Carolina to pick my wife up from visiting her family and friends. Stayed up talking with her mom all night long and she doesn't understand why I didn't contact divorce lawyer sooner. I have an appointment on Wednesday. I am determined to move forward with the divorce as fast as possible. The sooner I can get her out of my life the better. I am ready to move on and find someone who loves and respects me for who I am and I don't feel like a paycheck. Again thanks for all the support I will update as things progress. Your mill will support you to a point but do not divulge too much information with her as it may be used against you during divorce proceedings. Once the divorce proceedings start, reality will hit your STBXW and may possibly beg for a second chance. Never entertain this, do not become her plan B. I wish you all the best and do keep us updated. This. The in-laws are still her family. Any new relationship you choose to have with them should be built after divorce is finalized. Yes. Watch the mill. She will always choose her daughter and support her interests. She's only saying what your wife is already wanting, a divorce. This doesn't prove that she's on your side. It proves that her agenda is to get you to a divorce. Will do. Congrats on moving forward, may you find happiness in your future. I can't wait till your STXW falls in love in the future, and the guy cheats and leaves because he's settled. All the best. But three days ago you said you were no contact with her and you were done, why would you then drive miles to pick her up? And her mother might be supportive now, but that will probably change later, at the end of the day, that's still her child. I had to come pick her up and bring her back to PA for work and such. Her mom sees the changes and mistakes she is making and was brutally blunt with me and said that I'm more powerful than she would be and doesn't know why I didn't kick her to the curb sooner. She said I didn't deserve to be treated the way she has been treating me. I'd cry I kept holding on to some glimmer of hope but that is gone as reality settled in. What was the conversation like on the ride home, does she even care? No she wanted me to keep paying her bills and giving her a place to live while she continues cheating. How old are you guys? Sounds like she lost a bunch of eight Bo thinks she's hot shit. Karma is coming for her, trust me there. She's 32 I'm 38. 
I should have listened to all of you from the get-go. Update. I'm so sorry you're going through this. You're worthy of love and loyalty. Stay strong mate, no one deals with infidelity perfectly. I hope things get better for you. Hey man, I should have listened initially too, but I'm out now. You can do it. Nobody is judging you. It's literally a trial by fire. You learn as you go. The hurt is just inevitable. We all go through it. How you got out on the end is what matters. Everyone has to go through the process. Otherwise, you would have always questioned yourself. Don't be too hard on yourself, this kind of shit messes your mind up. You know now, that's all that matters. Act appropriately. Trauma makes you do SHT you never thought you'd do. Don't be too hard on yourself. Finding friends post-divorce. Advice. So I've never had a lot slash any friends before marriage or during marriage but as the divorce looms near and I know I'm gonna have to get out and spend time with people or I'm gonna lose my mind. Any suggestions on how and where I can meet people to just hang out with go camping grab a beer etc all suggestions are welcomed. This won't be that applicable to many people, but what worked for me, my wife cheated and marriage ended when I was 43, now 45, was I signed up to a martial art, Kyokushin Karate, and joined a local dojo. Where I lived I had no friends or family because I moved here to be with my ex-wife, and I worked from home so had no workmates even in the same country. Through the martial art I've made two friends I would consider best friends, and a bunch of others I consider good mates. I get to go on road trips with the club to take part in tournaments, and have met loads of people from other dojos now too, there are also lots of social outings I now get invited to, and we train up to four times a week so I get a lot of social interaction without even putting in effort. The best part is, a lot of them are also other guys in their 30s and 40s also with struggles in life, who are using it as a way of bettering themselves. Look for groups in your neighborhood. Hiking slash knitting slash fancy dining slash books slash. I don't know if you're present on social media, but almost every town has their own page slash group and maybe put a topic about something to do. There's also Bumble, it's traditionally a dating app, but it also has a friend feature, it's free, and if you turn on friends, you disappear on the dating part. Your local library often has paper ads as well, here they for example offer beekeeping classes, sewing. I met my wife on Hiking Smile we both went hiking that day and between 800 hikers that day we found each other, smiley face, op, find a club that suits your lifestyle, you might find many interesting people. Volunteering can be a great way to meet people and establish new connections. Going to the gym slash walks, picking up a hobby, and joining a class slash club are good places to start. Another thing is trying to be engaged when you're outside. You can decompress when you get back home. Look into meetup if available where you're at. Yay there's only two groups in my area and they are really duplicates lol. I'm right there with you. Spent the better part of the last decade committing to my marriage and my job so that I could provide for my wife and kids. She's now left me for another guy and a whole new friend group while I'm sitting here wondering how the hell to move forward. My work schedule makes it damn near impossible to have a social life and meet new people and any days I have off are spent with my kids. I'm ducked. Jiu Jitsu and dance classes have great communities. Martial arts worked for me too, I started up Kyokushin Karate two months after D-Day and it's changed my life, can't recommend them more. Join a billiards league or bowling league. Even if you're terrible. You'll get better and they're both games that involve a lot of standing around and chatting. Meet up. Com is a wonderful thing for finding friends with hobbies like your own. Go traveling. Just pack your bag and pick a random city. Find a few locals to show you around either on Reddit or there are dedicated sites for this. Just throw yourself back into the world and end the wallowing around, cool face. The gym. Always helpful. Start by acknowledging people you come into contact with. 
neighbors, people at the grocery store, can start as simple as a head nod and smile. The move onto simple subjects, but friendly topics of convo. Or I always thought church could be a place to meet peels. I need support. So I got my wife to talk to other guys online about six weeks ago. We scheduled marriage counseling. Long story short she didn't stop and it escalated to meeting up with multiple guys one of which she has feeling for and ended up having sex with. I keep wanting to make this work but she's been checked out. She doesn't see me as a husband and feels like her friends owned me. She had gastric surgery and lost 160 pounds in 18 months. Some days I feel like we are moving in the right direction and others I feel destroyed. She's constantly talking to guys she met online she claims are just friends and from the conversations I have overheard they are normal friend type conversations. My problem is she is on her phone all day long texting snapchatting etc like even if they are truly just friends if you spend all your time talking to other people how much are you really trying to make this work. She said she's leaning towards divorce and I'm getting to the point of just accepting it and moving on. I need to protect myself and my son, we have full custody, she's his stepmom. She blames everything on the fact that I've neglected her needs for so long the last two years I've been struggling with depression and an immense stress from my job combined with obviously ducking covid. I don't know what to do but I still keep being miserable hoping she wakes up or begins to heal from her past. She starts therapy tomorrow. I'm 38 this is my second marriage and I am still madly in love with her, I know I'd cry the amount of pain she caused me is unbearable, she is so good with my son even though he has been an asshole to her the past 7 years. I am not certain that there is any kind of response that is going to help right now. Your wife seems to be in a battle with herself, and doesn't know what she wants to do, and you're caught up in her ambivalence. If you could legally separate for a while, that would give both of you the opportunity to decide if you want to stay together, or if you want to split. Going North Carolina during this time is important, and if you haven't begun counseling, please consider doing so. I have started I see she's gonna file for divorce as soon as she saves the money for the lawyer. Get yourself an attorney immediately. Have the divorce drawn up to protect you and your son, period. Don't think for a moment she will have her attorney she will be paying for attempting to set the terms in any way, shape, or form imaginable to be good, generous, or helpful to you. After hiring an attorney, listen to him slash her and do exactly what they tell you. Even if you have to take a loan to hire this person, the total cost will be far less than giving your wife the first shot at all your assets and your son. You are in great danger. Your son is in great danger act now. She is not being remorseful, not cutting off all contact with those men. And maybe you just picked wrong to begin with. There has to be true remorse, and voluntarily cutting all contact with an affair partner. Otherwise it is a false reconciliation. She has either always been this way, or she stripped a cock. Thanks for these resources. My man, I'm sorry. Reconciliation isn't possible as long as one party remains involved. Her behavior is not acceptable in a healthy relationship. If she will not take her marriage seriously today, you've got two difficult choices, accept your polyamorous marriage or divorce. Both choices allow you to take the offensive. Your son sounds like a wise soul. He has reason to hate her. Perhaps listen to him. He deserves active protection and your example of proper self-care. She doesn't know how to express her emotions. Untagged. So last night she realized she booked a two-day trip to go see her dad for his FTSE and Father's Day over the same day we were planning my son's 14th birthday. I was so hurt she isn't going to be there for him I just shut down and cried silently. I finally said I can forgive you hurting me but hurting my son is too much. Instead of expressing her grief and regret she stormed up yelled at me ran upstairs and didn't talk to me the rest of the night. Like seriously looking back on our relationship I don't think she knows how to express any other emotion besides anger. 
I know she feels them but she doesn't know how to express them. She starts therapy on the 14th but said after she gets back from her trip she's filing for divorce. And honestly I'm okay with it I need this to end if she's not gonna accept that she has issues and confront them head on. Your post history suggests that you have already decided to file for divorce. What happened? Here is my advice for what it's worth. Get your affairs in order, see your lawyer and follow his advice implicitly. Separate finances completely. Open new bank accounts and transfer half of the money in all joint accounts to it. Gather evidence of her abuse to help in a custody case if needed, but your boy should be able to choose where he stays. Well I have my affairs in order and contacted a lawyer. The reason I keep putting it off is because I think she's experiencing a severe mental health crisis and what kind of husband would I be to bounce over mental health issues if she gets treatment and heals her wounds. I guess I took my commitment for better or worse more seriously than she did. You did, it is better for her and worse for you. Maybe you can be of better help from the outside, or maybe the finality will motivate her to wake up. But you have to get out of it. You're joking, right? You're not a psychiatrist. You're grasping at straws. Divorce her. That's the best shock treatment for her. It will take months for the divorce to be finalized. She can use that time to try to heal herself. If she sufficiently heals, and only you can be the judge of that, you can stop the divorce. You have gotten good advice on this sub, but have chosen to ignore it. Your pain and suffering is self-inflicted at this point. Good luck. You need it. What kind of a father would you be who allowed his wife your son's mother, to break his heart and allowed her to have multiple affairs? She even refused to cut contact with the other guys and she is saying she will be filing for divorce. You're not just essentially destroying your life, you're being a bad example for your kid. TBH, you seem like a very much troll to me as no sane guy would endure so much as you did. Nothing is more important than the happiness of the kids. She's his stepmom although we have primary custody. So you're saying you love the stepmom your wife, more than your son? Okay. Not at all she's been so good to him for 7 RS. Yes so let's pretend nothing happened as she had been good to your son but cheated on you, disrespected you, refused to hear you out or consider your feelings. Op you can take whatever steps you want but you do realize you can't either explain the story in here or keep it straight as there's a huge gap between your previous post and this one. If you want advice or help that will encourage you for a change, you should at least share and be truthful. You're basically refusing to divorce your wife after she cheated on you with multiple men. This very much shows you're not even affectionate to your son, I'm sorry to say. Vile stepmom fairy tales have a reason. Your family is your son, not her. Your previous account was about your wife getting pregnant from an ONS. This has none of that. Starting to question authenticity here. You wanna know what kind of husband you would be? The ex kind like you should be. You can always find an excuse to stay that is easy. What you need to do is file and look out for you and your boy. Is this the same wife who is pregnant from an ONS? Not sure why you're changing accounts to post these stories. He can't keep his story straight. Dude why are you letting her walk all other you and your children? I was so hurt she isn't going to be there for him I just shut down and cried silently. Dude, stop lying to yourself. Instead of expressing her grief and regret she stormed up, yelled at me, ran upstairs and didn't talk to me the rest of the night. Because she doesn't respect you. Like seriously looking back on our relationship I don't think she knows how to express any other emotion besides anger. She knows how to express her emotions and she knows for a fact you're just a placeholder. She starts therapy on the 14th but said after she gets back from her trip she's filing for divorce. You sat on your balls for too long. You should have been done with her by now. My points exactly. Op seems like he doesn't at all care for his son or the fact that his wife had multiple affairs. She disrespected him on countless occasions and now she's the one trying to file for divorce. 
he should understand no one can help him unless he helps himself. Is this a troll? Because a few days back you posted about asking for divorce. Now you are saying she will file after returning? Just like everyone in this situation my thoughts and emotions change by the day sometimes the minute. Why don't you go ahead and file? What is stopping you? I tell you, it's hopium. You are still seeing things with rose-colored glasses, that's hopium. You are still trying to rationalize the whole situation. But in reality it is very simple, she is a cheater. She doesn't care about you or your marriage or losing your kid. Until and unless you can realize what is good for you, and your kids, no one can help you. And you will be in this mess forever. To get out of infidelity you have to take the steps. No one else is going to do that for you particularly her. Accept. You should filling don't let anyone steer your boat. Love and hopelessness makes you do stupid things. Your previous posts detailed her infidelities and that you had contacted a lawyer. You seem to be backsliding. Get off your ass and take the initiative while she's on her two day trip to visit family. Retain a lawyer and begin the divorce proceedings. Seek majority custody. You may live in an at fault state. If you have evidence of her infidelity, give it to your lawyer. Good luck. I just reset my phone it pulled an old account I haven't used in years so not sure what sorry you're talking about. You do realize you're putting your kid through hell by staying with this person, right? How to trust again after divorce. Build trust. As I begin to move on with my life my biggest concern is how am I going to be able to trust my next partner? My wife stole that from me and I don't know how to get that back. Pay attention to red flags. Pay attention to whether they appreciate you or not. I had similar concerns when I started dating. I found that asking them about how their last relationships failed provided some good insight. I dated one woman who had an affair and it ended her marriage. She said that she took a lot of therapy and realized how destructive it was. The thing is, I'm not willing to take that gamble. She told me about how when men found out their attitudes changed towards her, they either just used her for sex or didn't want anything to do with her. This was a very attractive, very successful woman in her early 30s. So prior history is important. Another thing is how they describe their exes, are they all scumbags? If so, maybe the problem is with them and not their exes. Overall you are going to have to take a risk, but mitigate that risk by paying attention to red flags. Don't just let them go because you are starting to have feelings for them. Don't. Move slow and take your time. Don't jump in with both feet. Get to know the person you are dating. Trust either will or won't come over time. See the red flags and be a critical thinker. Don't make promises. Don't talk about marriage slash kids slash commitment. Just casual dating and having fun. Don't get involved with their kids and family or their drama. Don't do anything that makes it hard to walk away if it is not right. Provide only yourself. Make sure there is no other reason for them to be there. Nope you don't pay their bills or fix their car. You don't pay their rent. You don't take care of their kids. People get into relationships for all the wrong reasons. Don't allow yourself to be taken advantage of. If the person you are dating is not self-supporting, they are after your money and stability. Accept the fact that you are vulnerable because of your previous experiences. Don't allow yourself to be fooled and fall too quickly. Plan on having lots of new experiences before you are even remotely interested in being tied down. Don't allow yourself to desperately search for the one. Users and abusers can smell desperation a mile away. On a simplistic level about 15% of women will cheat. So, you have an 85% chance of finding a woman that won't cheat smile. That along with experience and doing some research on how to find a good mate tilts the scale in our direction a lot emo. Like others have said, a woman that has cheated before will be a deal breaker for me. We hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Please comment, like and subscribe.
Cheers. Have a wonderful day or night. Wherever you are, 